Hello everybody, um, it's Mr. Price here. We are going to try and attempt to do some uh, virtual learning and hopefully everyone can see my screen here. Um, last thing we talked about before our break was uh, the Oregon Trail. We played the Oregon Trail game and uh, we talked about westward expansion. So now today we're going to talk about expanding to the southwest which is, includes the Republic of Texas. We all know Texas as a, one of the biggest states in the United States. It's the most recognizable state if you um, include California and, and Florida in that category. But um, we're going to talk about how the United States gained Texas and how, how much controversy was involved in that process. So get your guided notes out or just follow along with me and um, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll try to talk a little bit slower, but no promises because I tend to um, talk pretty quickly. All right, so um, it starts with uh, Texas was owned by the Spanish colony, Mexico. Um, we're going back for a while now in the early 1800s. Um, Spain was in control of Mexico still. This is pre uh, prior to when Mexico gained their independence. So Spain controlled the area. And at first they didn't want anything to do with the Americans. They kind of saw what um, what they were up to and how they were really up to no good. So Spain's like, no, 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 this is our territory and it's gonna stay that way. But eventually in 1821, they gave this guy Moses Austin a land grant. Moses Austin, just an American to have a little bit of territory here in Texas. Um, so they were okay with him living here. He brought some people over, but it was small. It was still small at this time. Um, Mexico then eventually won their independence from Spain, which we talked about maybe like a month ago. Um, so they were wondering, well, is this deal with Moses still gonna be um, intact or will Mexico not want them there? Well, eventually actually Moses Austin passes away and his son takes over. So that is a man by, uh, actually, it's um, Stephen Austin. That's right, Stephen Austin is his name. Um, and Mexico was okay with the agreement. They're like, all right, we'll, we'll honor this. Um, if Spain was cool with it, we'll be cool with it. Um, so the goal of them being there, the, goal, the reason why they were okay with Austin being there, because they were like, look, I want you to develop some of the land and we can control the Indian attacks. There's been a lot of Indian attacks against the, uh, the Mexicans at this time. They didn't want to uh, deal with it, so they were like, well, maybe the Americans could deal with it. Um, so Austin actually gathered 300 families to Texas. So he brought over 300 families over, um, and it's, they start getting a little, bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit more Americans, and by the year 1830, 20,000 Americans live in Texas. Um, they, and they built cotton plants there and just fields and fields of cotton. As you can see up here in the top right, those are cotton fields as far as the eye can see. And with cotton, unfortunately, becomes uh, brings slaves also. So slaves were brought into Texas as well. Okay. <clears throat> so there was an agreement with the Americans uh, to, if they lived in Texas, with the Mexicans, they'd have to convert to Catholicism. So they had to be Catholic. Um, Mexicans were very Catholic, um, and the Americans were mostly Protestant, which is a different form of Christianity. Um, so at first they're like, oh yeah, sure, fine, we'll, we'll convert to Catholic. But they really didn't feel any uh, loyalty to Mexico. They didn't really care what they thought. And the more Americans came in, the less they cared. So um, Mexico is kind of getting irritated by this. They're like, well, wait, that was part of the agreement. you got to be Catholic. And uh, they're like, wait a second. The more people, the more Americans that are coming here, the less they're listening to us. So we're going to put a limit on how many of you all can, um, can come into our area. They feared, the Mexicans, they feared that the United States wanted Texas as a state. And it turns out their, their fear was right, obviously. 
Um, so Mexico started enforcing religion more. They banned slavery. They got stricter with their own rules. And they're like, hey, Americans, you have to listen to our rules or you can't be in here any longer. Um, so we'll see how the Americans respond to all of this. Um, Mexico actually sent troops to enforce these laws. Uh, they didn't like um, how they weren't listening, so they wanted the Americans to take it a little bit more seriously. During this time, however, a man named Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana took charge. And uh, Lopez de Santa Ana was not a, like a president, but he was a dictator. A dictator who has absolute power. So um, if we can name some dictators in history, like uh, Adolf Hitler or Fidel Castro from Cuba, um, it's kind of in the same vein. Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana became the dictator of Mexico in 1833. So... The U.S. wanted to take action against this. They didn't want to deal with a dictator. Obviously, they are uh, democratic. So a, a form of uh, people called the Tianos, which is Texas Mexicans, so Mexicans that lived in Texas, they supported the U.S. They didn't want to really deal with the, the new dictator involved either. So there was some support leaning on the American side. Um, so the Texans actually started fighting a little bit with the Mexican troops in the year 1835 down um, south in present day, like the, the lower part of present day Texas. Um, the Texans actually took San Antonio away from the Mexicans, which is located in the south near the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so Santa Ana was not happy about this, and he actually started getting his troops together to march north. And obviously, we are heading towards um, a war here. So the Texans declare independence for the Republic of Texas. So um, it's funny, the Texans were like, hey, this is ours now after we took over San Antonio. And they just declared their independence. Well, uh, obviously, Mexico didn't like that. So um, something's about to happen. Uh, Texans got more soldiers to volunteer to serve, including African Americans, Tianos, uh, other volunteers. So they started p picking up some steam. Texas wanted their own freedom. They wanted their own to be their own entity. They wanted to not be a part of Mexico. They declared their own freedom. And we'll see if they even be, want to be a part of the United States, because that's still a question at this time. Well, San Antonio, or I'm, I'm sorry, Santa Ana reaches San Antonio. Um, and the Texans were ready for his attack. They had all these volunteers ready. They were ready to go. Um, they positioned themselves in an old Spanish mission called the Alamo. And it's kind of like a, a little bit of like a fortress, like a Tornan castle. They had soldiers in the Alamo. Uh, however, they thought they were ready for this attack. But in, at the Alamo, uh, the, the Mexicans brought 6,000 people with them. The Texans had a low 150. Uh, so if we do the math at home here, that's about, uh, I don't know, 25 times or even more times the amount of people for the Mexicans. And Texas was low on almost every single supply. So they thought they were ready, but really, in reality, they were not. Um, so the Mexicans attempt to siege the Alamo. They attempt to run it down. They want to take over, capture any soldiers inside, and take back Texas because they thought it was rightfully theirs. Um, the siege happened, which a siege is attempting to capture by surrounding or bombarding. So they surrounded the Alamo. They were ready to go. There's a famous movie scene with the attack. I might even post that too so you guys can watch it. Um, Captain William Travis, who was inside the Alamo, they, they knew they needed help. So they somehow were able to get a message through the Mexican lines via a letter out to uh, fellow Americans and fellow Texans to try and help them because they were captured. They were, I shouldn't say captured, they were surrounded and about to be captured. So they somehow get this letter of desperation out and 
The letter consisted of this from William Travis. This was on February 24th of 1836. I shall never surrender or retreat. I call on you in the name of liberty, of patriotism, and of everything dear to the American character to come to our aid with all speed, victory, or death. So obviously, uh, William Travis was very passionate in this letter. Um, he knew that he needed help, and he needed help desperately and quickly. But William Travis was not about to retreat. Okay, in the name of patriotism, victory or death, they will be, they will go down with the ship, if you will. So um, a cannon shatters the mission walls on March 6, and here comes the battle. Um, Santa, La Santa Anna leads an all-out attack. Um, every Texan involved were ended up be being killed, and but the Texans did um, do a good job, and they took down 1.5 thousand Mexicans. So that, they did a pretty good job for how little they had. Um, to defend themselves, but again, it was a, uh, a a bloody battle, and all the Texans were lost. Um, the United States they wanted to seek revenge for this. All right, um, so people started getting passionate about this. They started having more volunteers. They wanted Texas, and they wanted to get rid of the Mexicans for good. So the U.S. Um, about a month and a half later, about six weeks later, they locate Santa Ana. All right, so April 21st, they find him, and they surprise attack him. Um, people would, would it, the, famous, the famous line of, remember the Alamo? Um, it's in a lot of movies, or people say that jokingly still, um, is when they, they said that when they started to charge at Santa Ana and his troops, they'd cry, remember the Alamo, remember the Alamo. And um, that's where that famous line comes from. Uh, the Battle of San Juancito lasted 18 minutes. That was it. 18 minutes. Some battles last days. This one lasted 18 minutes, and 630 Mexicans were dead in those 18 minutes. So Santa Ana knew that all was lost, and they had to sign over Texas for good. So the Texans carried a flag with one white star on it in battle. And that is where they get their nickname, the Lone Star Republic. And you see up here in the top right, that is the Texas flag. Um, Texas was bankrupt. Um, and the Mexicans didn't honor the treaty. So this is the problems that happened right after they declared their independence. Um, so the U.S. wanted to add, annex or add on Texas because Texas at first wanted to be their own independent nation. But the U.S. is like, all right, well, we could, add, we could annex you. We could add you on. That way we could help you out. Um, but at first, President Andrew Jackson at the time says, well, uh, the issue of slavery is involved. Uh, there's Mexicans still around. We're not doing this. All right. So Texas actually stayed independent. And um, they offered free land for anyone who wanted to come. So Texas, uh, which is a little known fact, they were independent for a while. That's why the Lone Star State nickname emerged. All right, guys, um, that is it for today. Hopefully you followed along. Hopefully I, I didn't um, talk too quickly, but if you have any questions, get a hold of me at mprice2 at APSLearns.org. Uh, okay, um, signing out for today. Thank you.